Hey, how you doing? This is Glenn Gruby at Functional Health and Acupuncture. Today I want to do a video about serotonin, which is a real important brain chemical for feeling happy. And if we understand some of the uh, metabolic factors, some of the environmental factors, how our food and how our, even our genes affect our production of this, our brain chemistry, we can then get strategies for optimizing our brain function so that we might not be so reliant on just medications. So first let's talk about how we make serotonin. It starts with an amino acid called tryptophan. And our body takes tryptophan from food and turns that into 5-HTP and then serotonin and then actually into melatonin, which helps us sleep. So really, if we don't have enough serotonin, we might have a sleeping problem. Okay. So for the first step, 5-HTP, we need some cofactors. We need iron and we need something called biopsy. So if we're anemic or we're not absorbing our iron, we might actually not be making enough serotonin and not feeling very good. Biopterin we'll talk about in a minute. Next step from 5-HTP, which actually is a supplement you can get in the store, and it might be helpful. Some studies have shown it's as helpful as, um, as SSRI drugs for mood. But anyway, to make the serotonin, we then need B vitamins and we need magnesium. Minerals and vitamins are important, especially these B vitamins. So again, if we're not getting them in our food or we're not absorbing them well, we might not be making good uh, brain chemistry production. Okay? Biopterin is a very important compound that's used in the uh, brain neurochemical production of this and dopamine, but it's also used to deactivate um, free radicals and, and oxidative stress in the body. So if we have a lot of stress, that could be problematic. But we need folate, and we need something called SAMe to make this. Now, when I say folate, I don't mean folic acid. I mean folate from dark green leafy vegetables. Sometimes we can use this in a supplement form, but if we have a genetic variant called the MTHFR, we might actually not be able to make this very well. And in that case, things like bread and enriched flowers are going to be problematic for us and may contribute to our not feeling well or low serotonin or imbalanced serotonin production. SAMe is also very important, uh, and that is controlled by certain genes, something called the MAT gene, the BHMT and the MTR, which is related to uh, B12 production, okay? But this is a master, what we call a methylator in the body, one of which purposes is to help make this biopterin, which makes 5-HTP, okay? SAMe also helps to convert the mel serotonin to melatonin, so it may have a, an aid in sleeping issues. If we're not sleeping, we may need some SAMe, or may need to optimize our function of, or production of SAMe, okay? One of the things that's involved with that, in turn, is something called homocysteine. Homocysteine is an inflammatory chemical that's made when your body doesn't have enough folate and may not have enough B12. And if we have a lot of buildup of, of homocysteine in the body, it may mean we have low SAMe. Okay, so homocysteine is kind of like the devilish compound, which we don't want to have too much of in the body. SAMe and glutathione, our body's master anti antioxidant, are things that we need that help us. We call them the angels in the body. Okay, So we want to optimize production of SAMe and glutathione and minimize our production of homocysteine. So it's important actually to have your doctor check your homocysteine levels. It's a regular test that can be done on a blood test. And the, the range is actually, in my opinion, too high. Between some labs say 11, some labs say 15. Really anything above 8, we're starting to have what we call compromised methylation. Um, and we inflammation. This is a marker that's a more accurate marker for risk factor of early death or cardiovascular issues than your cholesterol. So it's really something to pay attention to. Okay. So we want to minimize our production of homocysteine. Let's look at some other factors that deal with uh, that that can affect tryptophan and, and uh, serotonin production. Basically, anything that can inflame the body. You can have inflammatory triggers like pollutants toxins, hormone imbalances, food reactivity is a big one. A lot of people that have brain issues and, and neurochemical imbalances have problems with things like gluten or dairy or sugar. Food reactivity is a big problem. Stress and infections also, specifically your gut infections, long-term unresolved gut infections. All of these create oxidative stress in the body and create a chemical called peroxynitrate. And this actually helps to inactivate tryptophan, but we can't use it 
that we can't make 5-HTP, we can't make serotonin, and we're not going to feel well. So all of these things are going to affect how well we're going to feel. So some key takeaways for today I want you to think about. First of all, you will need to address and assess inflammation in the body. Infl inflammation will deplete your glutathione, which is your master antioxidant. It depletes your biopterin, and ultimately is going to affect your serotonin production. This could be infections, this could be food sensitivities are a big issue, this could be hormone imbalances, even blood sugar imbalances cause inflammation. Second thing, you want to make sure you have adequate levels of vitamins and minerals. A good quality multivitamin may be helpful, but really optimizing your digestion and assessing that is important. Uh, you want to know your plasma homocysteine levels. Again, ideal range is between 6 and 8. Above that, you're starting to have problems. Okay? You want to make sure you absorb enough and eat enough protein. A good quality protein at breakfast is an important way to start the day. You don't want to start your day with Cocoa Krispies and, you know, Cocoa Puffs. That's not going to serve you well. You don't want a sugary breakfast. You don't want bagels. You want a protein breakfast. Okay? Set last thing. Another thing is that 5-HTP and SAMI may be useful nutrients. They may be useful supplements that can help, but not always. Sometimes you need to address inflammation first. They're not always the right choice right off the bat. And finally... You really want to work with a professional that can help you assess your metabolic state, understand the genetic factors. We can do genetic testing to see are there weak points with your ability to make SAMI or make folate, for example, or make biopterin. Um, you want to assess those things. You want to assess your inflammation. You want to assess your triggers that can impact your health. And then we can make the strategies for you to start feeling better. Hope this was helpful. You can look for us uh, online, more videos. Or look us out on the web, fhainstitute.com. And thank you for watching.